Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, let's uh, get it on the road real quick. Uh, we're joined by High Chief uh, Peter Ame, is uh, former chairman, Inter-Party Advisory Council, uh, IPAC. But now he leads another park <laughs> <laughs> altogether. It, it's so good to have you on the program, Peter. Uh, thank you. We appreciate the pleasure. Thank so we're going here. to kickstart this conversation by saying, first of all, uh, you are not new to leadership within and outside of political parties and, and all of that. When you look at Nigeria today, what's your assessment of the state of the nation? I think the assessment is the fact that uh, leaders have not um, taken leadership seriously. Um, leaders that have been in charge have actually, you know, you know, tend to want to be, you know, regional, tribalistic, and nepotistic in their attitude towards nation building. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that, that contributes largely to the effect that the country has not really made a substantial you know growth both economically and uh, uh, politically because mm. the fact remains when leaders are uh, are not you know open-minded about how to structure a government how to structure development how to bring people in how to have a planned process where more nigerians will be accommodated in the process of governance then you have a problem with with that system because those you bring in will not be, will have issues of being you know, less competent, mm. you know, uh, are not having a necessary knowledge that is required to drive the growth because the, the recruitment process is not based on, you know, this criteria that I've earlier mentioned. Interesting. I, I think Juma was a second. Um, talking about um, nation building and all of that, let's look at the protests quickly. Do you think the protests from 1st to 10th of August actually drove home the message of the hardship and um, the high cost of living of Nigerians. Was it necessary? First of all, I would say that protests strengthen democracy. Everywhere in the world, people protest constantly, consistently, so that government, those in government will know that they have responsibility to the people, you know, while in office. And mm -hmm. if you travel to in, uh, countries beyond our shores that practice democracy, you find out that people are protesting for right of dogs, you know, right of you know, people who are drinking tea and those drinking coffee. <laughs> so what protest does is to be able to, it, it's like a check between the time election was conducted to the next election. Because if you leave, uh, you, 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 Nigerian, what Nigerians have done was to zone the action to say no next election. What do you do? You become weaker when, when the government becomes stronger than the people mm -hmm. over the uh, period of four years, when you don't question them, when you don't interrogate their activities and their policies that are, you know, done without proper planning and structure. So the protest, in fact, as I earlier you know, enumerated in my, in my introduction of this protest issue, mm -hmm. is the fact that it's important. You cannot say that protest is not important. Mm -hmm. Those who are telling you this might be because they are not in government. Because mm -hmm. if you look at some statements that have been made by President Bola Mentin over the years, he, the man has been protesting since the 90s. Mm -hmm. he, he, in fact, we should call him Petrom of all protesters. So for the fact that he knows this thing, that he said these are your children, they are going out there to protest. Don't shoot them. Don't Because he knows the level and input that protest will bring to go good governance in our country. Mm. And it is necessary because some of the decisions that they was taken, I've been issued from the inception that the inauguration was to be done on May 20th, were irrational. They were in plans, they were in policy driven and mm -hmm. economists. That should be a, a proper calculation. They are, they, right now, they are launching on CMG buses. These are things that you do to cushion the effect proud before you make announcement. Mm. So you do mm -hmm. all these things before, you don't do it after. Because when you did this decision, you know, and took for a subsidy house without us calculating it, mm -hmm. filling station went up to 800 and something naira for 190 per liter. Mm. Well, okay, those who work for 200,000 per month, 150,000 per month, okay, let's say 30,000 army work as a day, their transportation cost increased by 300 percent. Mm. So, how does those people survive? Who's going to cushion that effect? Mm. But those in government have not, nobody to worry about. Government is going to fire their car, their generator, mm. their flight allowances, mm -hmm. their whatever allowances. So, they are telling you you don't need to protest. Why? I was on the street. I protested. I this was last protest. Mm. Seriously, I participated. There are videos. I participated wow. actively. People ask me, why are you protesting? You have nothing to protest. You are not hungry. I say, do you think protests are about hungry? I have children in this country. Children that are going to also participate in governance in this country. What enabling and value are they creating that I have to wait until that time? So I have to join those who are protesting to ask for good governance. Because it is the only way that a nation can prosper is when there's good governance. And when there's governance that is driven by, by, by purpose, for the interest of the common man. If governance is driven for the interest of the common man, but not for the microscopic few that are in government, then we have a, a, a system that every man will be, you know, you, if you feel, accommod you feel accommod you're accommodated, then you, you feel that there's a growth. Hmm. But what we have today is segregation. 
where the rich are this way and every other person. Let a, okay, like Mr. Peter, let us look at the efforts of government now. You know, when the president came out, um, when he came out and he gave his speech, he listed out things in which he had done. And he says he has made effort here. He has done this here. He has done that here. He has done this here. Do you think this present administration is making effort to douse the situation of hunger and starvation in our land? I, I don't believe so, sincerely, because uh, his speech, there have been uh, contradictions by those who are governors. He said they gave 500 and something billion. 570. All go many governors have come and I never gave them such amount of money. That the money was for COVID-19 relief. Let, let's be very clear for the, for the sake of perspectives. Is, is it about how much came or the source from which it came? It was from the source from which it came. Mm. Because, you know, you have you, when the governors have taken loan. Right. You know that from the World Bank in this case. World Bank. You mm. can't take that as part of your achievement. Mm. It was even on before you came into government. Mm -hmm. President Tumu, in his speech, he, go and check it. He made promise about one year ago that he was going to be um, tilling 500,000 hectares of land for, for, for farm. Mm -hmm. He has not tilled one, one, one square meter. So what are we saying? You, it's not about, he can read another speech tomorrow morning and say what he has done. Maybe people are not sitting him down to tell him, this is you are saying, though, you're, they are not carrying it out. Though. Mm -hmm. Because you can't just be reading speeches. Speeches that are not trans, that will not transform into reality for the people. We'll never, the people will never, will, will never be satisfied. Because the fact is that about concrete, concrete issues. Hmm. You see, one of the things that we take as governors in this country, where the uh, president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria will, um, like, uh, we will go and launch car park, you know, we, you go and launch CMB buses. These are elementary level of governance. Hmm. Um, fiscal policies, you know, um, how they call it, uh, management of agricultural sector, where we have more, you know, more opportunity to grow the economy, hmm. should have been the major focus. Because we have the manpower. And then we have the land, arable land to farm. So what are we waiting for? That's where we can also invest so much money and then grow our economy and then put, pull more people out of poverty and put more people in jobs. So what we are saying is that there's no direction. As I speak to you, mm. look at the NNPC saga. We can't put back our refinery on stream. There's the, um, um, the, I just saw news that the those state was complaining that their refinery can't even get crude. Right. <laughs> they can't get crude. What is in that corruption? And the president is the minister of petroleum. I felt the president should have been the minister of agriculture. I'm, I'm sincerely telling you the Why? truth. Why? Because you think we need food more mm -hmm. than crude? We need food. We, 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 we need food. We need, stay, we need a foreign exchange. And we have, we have better. We can do better there than even this mon monocrop economy that we're pursuing. We can do better in agriculture. Mm -hmm. I'm from Kogi State. I know what the land in Kogi State has. We, 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 Niger State is close to us. You can tell me that we can do better here. So why are there no concentration there? See, a lot of graduates are graduating every year. We are seeing um, um, Prince Abaka University that we're doing this thing. I saw a lot of things. Where are get to go to get the jobs? You have to look at how you can grow, expand the, the system, the economic nest, so that more people can be accommodated. Because we can't continue this thing for a long time. Mm -hmm. What we have is a protest. And it's not even a mass protest. You know, there's a mass protest, right. there's a protest, and mm -hmm. there's a riot. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it's not even a mass protest. If, if it's a mass protest, maybe those sitting down will reason. Because without this, all this issue being put to, to, to enrich our democratic practice, mm -hmm. no, governance will be like a a baby team where people just come to office. You can see what the Akpabio said. That you go and protest who will be eating. Which are you eating? You are eating government money. These people are hungry. These people are worried. What you should give. One of the greatest things a leader gives to his people is hope. Mm. When you say hope, you act upon are that you this government is not giving enough hope? It's not. Mm. I want to ask a question. Though. You know, for every guest that comes here, I always say to them, this protest, we talk about the protest, we talk about the protest. And then some of the guests will say, no, Jumai truth is this process shouldn't be about president bola ametinubu we should go down to the local government and the state governors and ask them these questions how true is this opinion sincerely there's a weak governance system in the state um the state governors are like emperors mm -hmm. they're almost they're almost you can't even assess them you can't communicate with them they spend government money the way they like it they have almost subdued citizens of those states with fear but but the fact is still remain because if you look at our constitution you look at legislative lists and non, you know, exec, your executive legislative lists and all that. You decide that there's so much percentage on the side of federal government. Mm. When you go to state, state has overriding interest on land. Mm -hmm. When you come to federal government, federal government has overriding interest on a lot of things. So if you have that 40 something percent that you are taking from the federation account, mm -hmm. what are you doing with it? What is your workforce? Do we have a transparent process of how these resources are managed? So these are, we, we, we start from, you know, for you to get something right. 
Sometimes the head determines everything. Right. We look at the state. You are talking about state now and the local government. Mm -hmm. You are talking about the fact that the state has no ICPC. The ICPC that is supposed to be arresting this people is in Abuja, controlled by the federal government. This EFCC is controlled by what? Why, what are they doing? With so much money being stolen, is, is, the, is the federal government stopping the state to create their own mm -hmm. independent anti-corruption <laughs> bodies? Kano has one, for example. It's not effective. so. Can't, can't other states follow suit? I think I believe in the one the federal. I've never believed anything that the federal government does for a reason, but I believe in the one the federal government has. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at what CX has become, state independent electoral commission, mm -hmm. they are like um, uh, they are in a vegetative state. The governor does whatever I like with it. Local government election is 100% for the state. So we, we are looking at something that works and can be strengthened without interference. Mm. We must start from where it works. And if you look at the Obasanjo time, there were more people being arrested from the party, PDP, than being arrested outside. But in this time, there's so much freedom for those who, you know, who run under the shadow and banner of the APC. So what we are saying is that you let this thing work independently and let Nigeria see that whatever you are put in place with the anti grab agency is holding governors accountable. Mm -hmm. It's going to, like Section 162 has been removed from the Constitution now, you know, for grant financial autonomy to local government. You hold local 774 local government accountable for the resources that will, you know, that will that transfer from them from the federal account to their source account. So these are things that the government must do first. Then the government must take, there's one thing, you have to prioritize your investment. Right. You can't you can be running a task getter and expect to get, you know, um, put in high, they say jack of all trade, mm. almost times fails. So what the government should do, like I, I believe, the government is saying too many things and we're not getting results for any one of them. The mm. government should make sure that if, I, if you are a president today, why is Dango Day Refine not getting um, crude oil? Do everything within possible, your possible best. Within two weeks, you are the president. But the president, but that's has directed that uh, crude be sold in Naira to all the local refineries, including Dangote. It hasn't happened. It hasn't been implemented mm. yet. That's what we are saying. You are president, you are commander in chief. Those who are, who are going against you, change your cabinet, you reshuffle them. Nigerians are not in, in short supply of competent people. So you can't allow competence, incompetence to drive our process. Mm. And then in, in return, that incompetence makes our people impoverished make them put them in a place where they are, they are, they are properized mm -hmm. so for me i believe the president should look at is it ninja state is it kogi that has land is it bruno where do we start this farm business where do we start to produce where do we start to put our those who read agricultural economies those who read agricultural science where do we start to bring them in where do we start to create a chain mm -hmm. for this product you, where do, how do we become the highest exporter of um, cashew nut? How do we become the highest exporter of cocoa? How do we return back to the days of granite pyramid? These are simple things to do. We have the land already. We have the land, but let's not forget that we also have what we call, we're facing insecurity in this country. I, I, I think the insecurity is, uh, is on the side of the willingness of the government to tackle it. Because uh, this protest that just passed, you saw the level of armory that was, that was, that was brought out for, deployed mm. for, for, against all armed civilians. So if the government wants to stop banning three, who are they? What do they have? <laughs> the greatest terror in the world is those in government. They have more. They have more access to resources, access to even buying weapons on credit. So if they want to stop, we have the manpower. Why not put more people? Look at the ungoverned spaces where this thing happen. You can map it out. If it's so pleased that you find out there's so much kidnapping in the farm, you map it out and put intelligent people there. Mm. Track this with them and pick them. You cannot commit a crime today anywhere you are mm. against the government that the government will not pick you up in this country. But this, this crime is being committed against the people that is not affecting those in government directly. And that's why they are being docile and being, you know, being, being very funny about the decision to arrest those who are you know, manipulating the process. We have gold in Brun in El Zafra. What is happening? Do we declare that? We just talk of crude, talk of crude, talk of crude. Nigeria is blessed. Mm. We need competent hands. We need people who have capacity. People who are, who are driven by conscience, people who believe that if we build an uh, uh, attempt to attempt an egalitarian society, there will be prosperity for a lot of people. And if there's prosperity, there's peace. Poverty is violence. The more, mm. the more you put people into poverty, the, the more they tend towards violence. Mm. Poverty is violence. You can read it. It, it, it. There are a lot of books on it. So why are we pretending as if we don't know? So you can't have your... Look, this country has a problem. Our education system is, is broken. Those days we used to attend schools, you see Mr. Or children of commissioners in the class, mm. children of uh, minister in the mm. class, children of... In fact, those who went to BUK went to classes with their bachelor's children. But today, as I speak to you, the federal investors are for the, the, for the people of the poor. No rich man, no, no minister send their children there. 
<laughs> so how do you mingle? Mm -hmm. School is beyond just writing and reading. Mm -hmm. It's also a social group for networking and, 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 and class arrangement. Mm -hmm. right. So when you have a system where there's a segregation in the system, when the very poor have a class, when the very rich have another class, then the system is broken. So we must come back to our senses and continue to protest as many times as we can peacefully mm -hmm. to ask that government return back to the models and do what is right to the, for the interests of the masses. Let's talk about um, your own assessment very dispassionately of President Bola Tinubu's uh, policy mm -hmm. thrust. <laughs> I, I really don't want to talk about it because uh, people would think that I do not see anything good. I, I could praise him for the um, sense he has used you know, to try to free the local government financial autonomy. But he has made to... efforts. Uh, you see, the governance is just four years. And for, you have to be very serious. Mm -hmm. Because if you have 50 years today, and four years is taking, you become 40, 54. Another four years, 58. Mm -hmm. So you are looking at the life of the people you are living, mm -hmm. leading. It's not about effort. It's about concrete result. Mm -hmm. What are the results? So far, so good. We are buying four today at 1,000 plus. What are the results? There, there, are, there are no results yet until we start to see results that is tending towards alleviating and um, removing people from where they are currently. Mm -hmm. Inflation, as I speak to you, is about on food alone is about forty-four percent. On on headline inflation is thirty-three point something percent, close mm -hmm. to thirty-four. So look at if you look at the combination of the of the data that is available from government statistics, we are not doing well at all. Mm -hmm. So government must sit down. Have professional. Don't stop appointing politicians anyhow. Put people in office that know what they want to do. I don't think I should have people in government like Buhari did. People will be in office for eight years without performance, without any performance index uh, arrangement, and I'll leave them for eight years. If you have people for one year and they're not doing anything, you sack them. Bring them. What, 200 million people for crying out loud? You will see people who are, who are technology driven, who are, who are people's interest driven, who are countries' interest driven, who will come. And you find out that Nigeria will start to work. Because for now, they are playing politics. Uh, Mr. Peter, some people will say removal of subsidies is one of the best things that's ever happened to us as Nigerians. And then we should suffer now and then enjoy later. What's your take on that, please? The people are making a mistake. What, what Tinubu did was an irrational policy decision. Mm. Because we are saying that if you want to remove subsidy, he said it before. Mm -hmm. When uh, Jonathan, I think it was it 200 Naira also, Jonathan added, you know, during his time. The speech was that, no, not this time. You, the arrangement you need to make. You don't make irrational decisions with people's life. Mm. If you want to remove subsidies, like I've said, what's wrong is saying each of the states has two 200 CMG buses already packed mm. to, to move. Ready to get on the road. Ready to get mm. on the road. Mm. You bring your student loan now that is there, and then you put it there. You put money into the investing, increase, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also, I've been asking for about how many billion or so for many, more, many mm -hmm. years. So, supposed to be 200 billion so every year. They have not gotten mm -hmm. it. Our schools, the public schools, is, uh, the, the universities are decaying. You mm -hmm. do all those arrangements. When you do all those arrangements and then look at um, what will affect the life of the people when this thing goes up, because costs will rise. Mm -hmm. You know, costs will rise because, you know, there's what they call push cost inflation. Mm -hmm. That will affect whatever product everybody is bringing to the market then you make arrangement and then invest in you, you know like the 500 hectares of land is said mm. if i invested in it successfully by the time next year when the harvest is going on you increase this thing every that market is coming in everything is crashing price right so it's just about plan it's not about just deciding to take the decision because you just wake up and say that infamous statement subsidy is gone and immediately those filling station change their price even with what they have as a president, I will tell you, you can't change your price. You remember, but you, we have to look at, you know, the flow meter, whatever you are buying from our flow stations, mm. uh, you know, um, um, a depot, whatever you are buying, that's when we now start to now calculate and put people along with it. Even if we have to use NIA DSS to follow your tank for new product for you before you increase price, you can't just sit down and increase price. Mm. So these are just one of the things the government will do and will show some level of seriousness. You know, without not, not, not allowing the people to suffer. Because the interest of governance is not to make life more harder for the people while you try to soften yours. Mm -hmm. It's to try to make sure that life gets better for the people while you do all the sacrifice. That's where leadership comes in. Because you are buying jet for 150 billion naira. Mm -hmm. In this hotel, when you are supposed to be doing austerity, you talk about the Russell report when you came in. Russell report was to remove federal um, parastatus and, and MDS ethics for 200 to 161 mm -hmm. or so. It will increase the um, reduce the cost of what government will save from 2012 
2015 to about 800 or something billion, mm. which would have been over 2, 2 trillion now because 2015, 2012 to 2015 was a different year. Right. So you look at what the Russian report has said, but you woke up, <laughs> you even went against it. You have created a new ministry, you have taken minister, you have brought, you have the highest number of ministers in the history of our country. It's not the numbers that makes it that, that make governance effective. Mm. It is the competence. Mm -hmm. You understand? So he has increased that. So a lot of things he has done against trying to cut cost of governance, against trying to make sure that the people who are in government, you know, tighten their belt. Why those outside government, the, the people you are leading, mm. see the effect of your leadership. The National Assembly is doing car park. I was here when the National Assembly was built. Mm. <laughs> so what? There was a there's a car park there. Why are you building the car park overhead car park? So they are, they are doing, building library in the National Assembly. Why the library in the tree? Federal uh, library is there are no books. Is in the bad state over thirty years. So is that governance? These are not governance. There has to be priority. You have to look at what benefits the people. Mm. What will the people have access to? The National Assembly is trying to build hospital. Why the National Hospital we have here in Abuja was built by military government. What are, what is wrong in trying to demolish part of it and put you know to the first century story building that will accommodate all the equipment that is needed for the masses to uh, to uh, to get there so is is that the government is more interested in the welfare of those in government than in the welfare of the people outside government mm -hmm. that's where the problem so, is. So, sounds uh, like uh, some sort of aristocracy yes, but uh, we, we hope you become a democracy in the real sense of exactly. the word uh, with all the efforts we are seeing right now thank you so very much uh, peter May. thank uh, for you coming to share with us, uh, this morning we do appreciate it uh, incidentally, that's all we have for you uh, today mm -hmm. uh, on the program. I mean, Juma and I have spent the last three hours or so here yes, uh, we trying have. to help you straighten the conversations. But just to remind you that the views of our guests are their personal opinions. I'm Uyi Agmo Freeman. And I am Jumai Manson. Thank you all so much for being a part of the program. Um, join Global Morning same time tomorrow. Bye-bye. Welcome to Global Morning. Oh! The death toll from flooding. Most time our politicians just bring in policies to for sure. Presidential, we have several more stories. The about. legislature was carefully crafted to... 22.2% inflation rates as of April this year. What does that say about where we are as a country? I think Nigeria has resorted to being resilient. Before you call the police station, before they even leave, they'll take permission from... I don't terrible. think there's really anything on ground to improve. We struggled as a strike. The Minister of Education volunteered and said, give me two weeks. It was a life. The president never gave me any deadline.